Hey guys, what's up? It's Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews, and I'm here with another edition of movies I saw as a child slash teenager that I probably shouldn't have seen at such a young age that made me into a weirdo. Uh, this is part four of this series, so let's just dive right into it with the first title, Faces of Death. I saw Faces of Death when I was probably about 13 years old when I got my own laptop, and uh, I downloaded it. Um, because I saw the film Shark Night 3D, um, which was an awful fucking movie. But in that movie, they mentioned Faces of Death, and they mentioned how, like, an eight-year-old can download it off the internet f for for free. Um, any eight-year-old can download Faces of Death off the internet for free. And I did exactly that, and I watched Faces of Death. Um, Faces of Death is a very interesting movie to me, because um, it's... <sighs> It's kind of a classic, in a way. Um, a classic shock film, a classic exploitation film, a classic um, real gore documentary, if you're into those kinds of things. This is like the original classic one that you gotta see if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm not super into real gore documentaries anymore, but I used to be. And I still quite like um, Orozco the Embalmer, for example. So I'm sure this would hold up on a rewatch. I haven't watched this in a few years. But I remember, like, also hearing my mom talk about this movie a lot. Um, because she, her mom let her rent it from the video store when she was, like, seven years old. And that's... That's the true story of how my mother saw Faces of Death. Um, so it, it only makes sense that I would see Faces of Death at such a young age. Um, not thanks to my parents' neglect in getting me a laptop. Um, now we got the big one. This is one that like my parents were always like super afraid of me seeing for some reason, even though we owned a copy of it. It's uh, Scarface, the classic De Palma film um, starring Al Pacino. Um, De, uh, Scarface is, I don't think, needs any introduction. Um, but I remember my mom always telling me, like, and always telling my father, like, you can't let the kids watch Scarface. Like, Scarface is too much. And um, then I, and, 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 and again, the, the reason my mom was always afraid of us seeing Scarface was because she saw Scarface at such a young age, um, and it really shocked her. Um, she's still afraid to watch The Exorcist because she saw The Exorcist at such a young age. Like, she refuses to watch it. I've tried to get her to watch it on multiple occasions, and she will not do it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Scarface continued to be a movie that eluded me until I was probably about 11 or 12 years old when my, when one of my aunts, like, made me aware of the fact that, like, what a... How would my mother ever ever find out I'd seen it unless I would tell her? And B, what my mom doesn't know won't hurt her. And as a result, I watched Scarface thanks to my aunt. And uh, it's a really great movie. And I remember specifically in the very early scene where Tony has to kill the guy in the um, refugee camp. And... He stabs him in the gut. Um, I remember that scene being, like, way more graphic when I was young. I remember, like, the guy's intestines hanging out and shit. Um, but when I watched it a couple years ago, um, I was surprised to see that his intestines weren't hanging out. He just had, like, blood on his stomach. Um, but, yeah. Scarface. Um, this one I didn't see as a kid. I saw scenes from it as a kid. And then I saw the sequel, like half of the sequel, when I was a kid. Um, it's Basket Case. Basket Case is a series that I really like. I think they're all consistently really fun movies. And I think they only get, like, more fun as they go along. I think this one is, like, a genuine, like, dirty, grimy, slimy, scuzzy horror film. Like, there's, I, there is comedy to Basket Case, but, like, it's very light. Um, in comparison to the sequels, which go way out there with the comedy. And it's and the sequels are really, really fun. Um, but I saw parts of Basket Case, specifically, like, the ending. And I think the first, the one of the early kills where the woman gets uh, a bunch of uh, scalpels in her face. 
I remember seeing those scenes when I was a kid. And then I remember watching like half of Basket Case 2 and finding it really weird. I was like, man, like this is not really a horror movie. Like there's like there's monsters and stuff, but or there's freaks and stuff, but there's not anything like that. Um, which leads me to my next movie, which is the first Hen and Lauder film I saw in its entirety when I was about 13-ish years old. Um, it's, uh, Basket Case. Not Basket Case. What am I saying? Brain Damage. What the fuck am I on? Um, Brain Damage, the Hen and Lauder film. Uh, I first heard about this film when I checked a book out of the library, which was Fangoria's 101 cult horror films uh, 101 Greatest Cult Horror Films You've Never Seen, something along those lines was the title, and in it they mention, they ref they talk about brain damage, and they also talk about, like, baby blood, they talk about Santa Sangre in that book, I think they talk about, like, Maniac Cop, and, um, Necronomicon Book of the Dead, they talk about quite a few, um, pretty good movies, um, Lair of the White Worm, I know, was in there, or at least was on the cover of that book, um, but they mentioned brain damage, and brain damage really stuck with me. And as soon as I saw it for this copy for five dollars at um, at a random Meyer, I bought it for five dollars. And that's the copy I've always owned. And there goes all the movies I was stacking. Um, next is Last House on the Left. Uh, this was a movie that um, my mother had not seen when she was younger. So she didn't really know much about it. So she didn't have a problem with me renting the original film. Like, she didn't want me seeing the remake because she heard the remake was really disturbing. But, like, she had no problem with me renting the Wes Craven original from Netflix when I was, like, probably 11 years old. And she just let me watch it and was completely cool with it. And I remember being not too shocked by it honestly i remember thinking like yeah this is this has got some moments like the forced lesbianism scene as well as the specifically the scene where krug is like cutting um the the chick with like a knife on her chest like i remember those scenes um and i remember the opening shower scene and how that i thought that was like a really great like opener like very memorable um way to open the movie uh I don't remember anything with the, the the comedic relief characters. I don't remember much of the revenge segment of the film. Um, keep in mind, this is, like, what I remember of when I first watched it. Like, I don't remember seeing those scenes. Um, but these specific scenes, like, really stuck out with me. And I remember my reaction to those scenes. Um, but, yeah, Last is on the Left. Great movie. Really great uh, horror film. Um, Wes Craven's first movie just a classic in general um i'm gonna go i'm gonna you know i'm gonna save the big boy for last um oh shit <laughs> um freddy got fingered written directed and starring written directed written and directed by and starring tom green um freddy got fingered is a movie that um my aunt uh was really into she thought it, tom green was like really hilarious and she loved his show and she loved this movie and she introduced me to this movie when i was probably about seven or eight years old and i really really enjoyed the humor in it i really enjoyed how gross and out there it was um Freddy Got Fingered is, like, one of my favorite comedies, unironically, to this day. I remember so much from watching the movie the first time. I literally, like, I can remember my reactions to, like, Daddy, would you like some sausage, to the back, to the back, to the backwards man, to, um, you're fucking fired, Bob, to the kid getting injured every time that, that kid gets fucking injured, to, uh, to uh tom, to um the guys to tom green's friend getting injured trying to skateboard um to rip torn saying fuck me uh you know i remember quite i remember my reaction to a lot of this stuff um when i first saw it and i thought it was absolutely brilliant and hilarious and i still think it's brilliant and hilarious a really great piece of neo surrealism um and just a great, great time in general. Uh, I really love it. 
this is probably my first Paul Verhoeven film. Um, I really love Paul Verhoeven. I think he's like a brilliant director. I think like Showgirls is really great. Um, I'm a big fan of that film. Uh, I love pretty much every film I've seen from him. I haven't seen Benedetta yet though. Um, so I need to get on that, but it's uh, hollow man. This was probably my first, uh, Paul Verhoeven film. Um, the hollow man starring Kevin Bacon. Uh, so I remember watching this as a kid and I don't, and I remember, I remember the things I remember were, I remember the scene where, um, Kevin Bacon as the invisible man is stalking the one chick and she like is ripping open bags of blood and spilling them on the floor so she can see his footsteps. And then he, and then she opens one of them and splashes it and it splashes it right on his face. And it's like a CGI, just, you know, blood floating in air. Um, and then it starts attacking her. And I remembered that so vividly. I had nightmares about that when I was a kid. And I also remember them turning the ape invisible and shit. You know, I remember them turning, uh, Kevin Bacon invisible. I remember quite a bit of it. I remember quite a bit of this from when I was a kid. Um, and then I rented it from Netflix as like a teenager and having not seen it in so long, uh, I was shocked by the fact that it was a film about an invisible rapist. Like Kevin Bacon's character is a rapist. And, um, I, was not like I didn't I didn't remember those scenes so my, my parents must have covered my eyes or had me leave the room for those scenes or something because I don't remember um any of the scenes where Kevin Bacon like you know is invisible and like undresses that woman while she's sleeping and like gropes her or breaks into that woman's apartment and shit like I don't remember any of that and I saw that as a teenager and it shocked me I was like what the fuck this is this was not in this movie last time I saw it um and finally the big boy this is a film that I saw thanks to Netflix um I'm talking about Cannibal Holocaust I don't know if I've talked about Cannibal Holocaust yet in this series I might have but we're gonna do it again because um I've got to talk about this again. Cannibal Holocaust is one of the greatest horror films ever made, in my opinion. You know, I don't think... I, I don't think too many people would disagree with that. Um, I know there, there are some people who would disagree with it. But either way, Cannibal Holocaust is a really great, really powerful exploitation film. And it stands out because it at least is attempting to have some kind of message compared to Cannibal Ferox, which is just, you know... I mean, Caramel Ferox is more fun. You got some, you know, dick chopping and stuff like that. Um, but Cannibal Ferox is also just a really, like, it just, it, it's, it's, it's more just straight barbarism for the sake of it. And, um, Cannibal Holocaust is a film that I saw thanks to Netflix. I rented it from Netflix when I was, the year before, the summer before I went, I started high school. I rented this from Netflix. And the thing that got me to rent it and that made me uh, want to see it was I was reading reviews of it on Netflix. And I got to a part where, in one review where they mentioned that there's a scene where they perform an abortion, like the, like the, the natives perform an abortion on one of their own and uh, like a forced abortion on one of their own and um i was like i have to see this scene this scene sounds immaculate and this was like a week or two after i had seen um after i'd seen aftermath um and uh i just decided uh to rent it and i watched it and i watched it the same night that i saw poltergeist for the first time so um, which is another film that I adore and love so much. Um, so that night I saw a lot of things that changed me forever and made me into a weirdo. And that's what this series is about. And that's the end of this video. And I don't know if I'm going to do another one of these, but you know, I'd like to do another one of these. I think, um, I think it would be fun to do another one of these sometimes. I got to see, I got to watch some more movies though. And I got to, I got to rewatch some other movies and, uh, see what I can see what repressed memories I can dig up and shit before I can really, um, kind of, you know, um, before I can make another one of these videos, I think. 
But that's it for now, guys. This was a short one. I know the other ones in this series are, like, really long. Because in the other ones in this series, I had a lot to say about those movies. And that's why I did those movies first. These are the ones that I don't have too much to say on for per movie. But I want to, like, still, you know, say some things about them. Um, so that's why there's so many movies. But mm. so it's such a short run time. Anyway, guys, that's it. That's fine. I'm done. I'm done fucking ranting. This is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews, signing off. Peace.